What's up guys, X-Man and Co here today and today we're making a beautiful pot bread. You guys that's not sure what it is, hang around, it's going to be amazing. Pot bread is a type of bread traditionally made in a flat bottom cast iron pot on the open fire or on a barbecue. Now guys, this is going to be amazing. Let's start with this cook. We've got a tablespoon of salt here and sugar, two tablespoons of olive oil. You can substitute that for vegetable oil. We've got two packets of yeast here, some parsley, some rosemary, a little bit of cheese, that's our twist, and then lukewarm water. There's a few ways of doing a pot bread. Now, one of the ways we really like to use, and it's really pretty much fail proof, make sure that your water is between 105 and 115 degrees Fahrenheit. Guys, if you go to the 140 mark, then you're literally going to kill your yeast, and we don't want that. It's not going to rise. Your bread's going to be a total failure. So another thing we like to do is add our yeast to the water. I see a lot of guys add it to the flour and all the dry ingredients, and you may very well do that, although we really appreciate it if it's in the water, because it works well and we can see that the yeast is actually growing. One way to see that your yeast is not growing is doing it in the water and nothing happens. I'll show you guys in a bit what it looks like. Nothing happens, at least you haven't wasted your whole batch. So in with two packets of yeast, and these packets are about 10 grams, I think that's pretty standard. And then what we're going to do is just mix it slightly. You don't want to go crazy. You just want to agitate it slightly. A twirl or two in the water. And guys, you want to put this aside and let it grow. Now that our yeast water solution is growing on the side, it's time to move on to the dry ingredients. We're going to add our salt to this stage, followed by sugar, our parsley, in with the rest of the herbs. And then the twist today is a little bit of cheese. Now guys, I've got about two cups of cheese here. You can decide how much you want to add. There you go, one and a half cup. I think that's going to be perfect for today. This stage, you just want to give it a gentle mix and make sure that everything is nicely combined. If you feel at this stage you need to add some more cheese, you can do that. Guys, it's been about five minutes, and as you guys can see, it's been activating the yeast, so we're quite happy now. Normally, you could leave it another 10 minutes if you want to. The longer you leave it, the more activation is going to take place. So we're just going to, to make it easy, add our olive oil, to this wet ingredients and then move over to our dry ingredients. We like to make a little bowl there for this wet ingredients. So let's just go ahead and add that. You can do it systematically, but we're just gonna go ahead and do it all at once. Right guys, now the fun part starts. We're just gonna mix all of these ingredients nicely and it's gonna take a little bit of time and you have to work slowly initially. Otherwise, it's all just gonna jump out of this bowl and it could get quite messy. For the first part of the mixing, we're using a spoon or a spatula, whatever works well for you. And you're just going to keep on mixing until the spoon doesn't do its job anymore and it's not possible to mix it. That's when the real fun starts and we're going to go over to our hands. It's going to be messy, but guys, at the end of the day, this is going to be so worth it. Guys, I like to add a little bit of flour to my hands and you don't need to do that. It's going to be sticky anyways. And we want to basically knead this dough until there's no more stickiness. Trust the process, add a little bit of flour every now and again if you need to, and then just fold it over. And after about 10 minutes, we should be where we want this dough. Boys and girls, 10 minutes later of kneading, and that's what you're looking at. This is what you have, have a look there. You can see that it's not sticky anymore, and it's nice elastic, that's exactly what you want. So I like to just put it into a bowl, and make sure it's nice and round ball into the bowl and then we're going to close the lid now we've got a physical lid here but normally you could use clear wrapping whatever works for you and if you want to do traditional pot brewet then the way to do it is to wrap it in a blanket as well and let it rise now the first rise is going to take about an hour hour and a half when you know that's ready it's basically as soon as this has doubled in size so let's put it in a warm area in the house or outside in the sun and then I'll see you guys in a bit. It's exactly one hour guys and look how this dough that we made raised. It's actually going outside this bowl so we're going to move over to another bowl realizing that it's raising so nicely. A second rise allows the yeast more time to work which changes the actual fibers within the dough. The second rise develops a lighter, chewier texture 
and more complex flavor. At this stage, you don't want to spend too much time kneading it. You just want to break it down once or twice, fold it over. Once we fold it three, four times, we're going to make a ball with it and then it's good to go back into our new bowl. We're going to add a little bit of olive oil just to line this bowl to make sure that it doesn't stick to it. Go into the bowl. We need to cover this bad boy. Give it another hour to rise and boys, then the magic's going to happen. We gave the second rise a full hour and guys, it's risen beautifully. Now we have to prep our flat bottom cast iron pot. So guys, we're using butter just to line it out a little bit. And you just want to make sure with this technique that the dough doesn't stick to the cast iron pot. That is maybe the worst that can happen to you. So we want to make sure that it's nicely lined at the bottom, on the sides, and then we're also going to line the lid. If for some reason that the dough does rise all the way through, that it doesn't stick to the lid. Look at that, guys. It looks absolutely divine. Look how that just pushes in. It's got so much fluffiness to it. That's what we're after. So we're just going to roll it out into the pot. At this stage, guys, you don't want to handle it too much. So we're just going to push it out, make sure it touches the sides. There you go. Try and keep it as even as you can. There's no guarantee it's going to raise evenly, but we always try. And then I like just to make some indents like that. There you go. Guys, this is ready to be cooked. Let's move over to the Weber. It's always a delicate situation when cooking bread outside in the open fire. So we're just going to go ahead, put our pot in the middle with a medium heat underneath. As you guys can see, I prepped it with very little coals at the bottom. We can always add more if we need to. We're also going to add some coals on top. Be careful not to put too much coals on top as it can really easily burn. Guys, we're going to give it about 45 minutes and I reckon that'll be perfect for bread. We might check in at about 30 minutes just to see how it's doing and if we need to adjust the fire. It's exactly an hour, guys, and I think this pot bread must come off the fire. An hour on the fire, guys. This thing is amazing. Just listen there. Hey? It's a beautiful crust. Let's hope it's nice and soft inside. Let's check it out. As you guys can see, it's still piping hot. Have a look at that. We've got some nice air pockets in there. We didn't even expect that. This looks absolutely beautiful. Nice crust on the side here. Guys, you need a little bit of both. You need a crust on the outside and nice and soft inside. Only way to enjoy this, well, there's many ways. One of them is with butter. So let's go ahead and smear this bad boy. Boys and girls, it's time. Cheers. Mm. Wow. Wow. It's warm. The butter just melts in it. Salty the way we like it. Crispy on the outside. Guys, come on. You have to try this. Guys, you know the story. If you like what you're doing, like, share, subscribe. Enable those notifications so you get notified as soon as we upload a new video. Thanks for watching. We cannot do it without you. We'll see you on the next one. Shh. Okay, go once a bite. There you go. This is amazing. Try it. Oh, yum. Give me more. Go loves it. Go try it out. It's amazing, eh? Mm -hmm.